Bwana asifiwe. Asalamu alaikum. You know, you can sit down. Wisdom would dictate after all have been said by very able, intelligent, experienced fathers of faith and also leaders. And then you are told you are the guest of honor, you must speak. And all have been said. You could just as well be wise and say, let's go home. But I do thank God for one thing. I am from this university. <laughs> the great, greatest university, not only in Kenya or Africa, but the whole world. <laughs> we read, others follow. And I must tell my son there, you are not the leaders of tomorrow, you are the leaders even of today. I think you have given your case and at 84, 85 there, I will vote for you. <laughs> the Cabinet Secretary, <laughs> Ministry of Your Education, Ezekiel Machogu, the Chancellor, Kenyatta University, Abbas and our Dr. Francis Mudaura, the Chair of the University Council, Dr. Ben Chumo, members of the University Council who are present, the Vice Chancellor, Kenyatta University, Professor Paul Wainaina, the Vice Chancellor, Catholic University of East Africa, very Reverend Professor Stephen Bogua, the Deputy Chief Kathy, retired Dr. Sheikh Rashid Omar, the Vice Chancellor, members of the Management Board, members of the faculty and staff, university chaplains and clergy, members from different faiths, distinguished guests, and dear students, comrades, good morning, good afternoon. I want to bring first the greetings from his Excellency, the Deputy President, Rigadi Gashagwa, whom you have given a name, the Rig G. <laughs> and the others, the truthful man. And that truthful man actually did come here to look for a good thing. <laughs> and I gave him a hard time. From Ruenzori there, he looked for me for some six months. <laughs> I would see him and I would move to another dome because I was not interested. <laughs> but finally, he did get me, or I did get him, whichever. I'm saying today, I'm very happy and very honored to be back to my alma mater. In the 80s, I was a student here at the university, at Kenyatta University, a period that destined my life in many ways. What I learned, what have become of me, what have become of me, now, what has shaped my life and made who me who I am today, I can say part of it was in this very institution, 
And when I came today and entered that gate, there are many changes, but I felt at home. When I saw the students all around meeting around, some sitting on the, uh, along the road, it reminded me, and it was very nostalgic, and I must say I am very, very proud of my university. I must thank our brothers who have come here and they have advised us. They have spoken from the Holy Quran and the Holy Bible, and they have spoken concerning our problem and a challenge that many of us maybe were wondering how you are going to overcome. But with God, all things are possible. Interfaith, and I must remind all of us, what forms you, the DNA that runs in you, can never be denied. And both the Muslim faith and the Christian faith, we have undeniable origin. We have God who is our Father, and the creator of the heaven and earth, and who created all of us. That is indisputable. And God, in his own wisdom, decided that we would come from another biological father who had two wives. So we are two siblings, one from Sarah and another from Hagar. And from the two sons of Abraham, Isaac and Ishmael, with a DNA which is the same, we have originated. There is no fight. And what brings us together is greater and more significant than what separates us. And so as humanity, and as we sit here, all of us, we originate from God the Father. And this God desires that we stay in unity as one people speaking one language so that a blessing can come upon us and the whole world can be united and we can become what God wanted us to be. As we gather here today to give thanks to the Lord for his goodness in our lives, our lives belong to this God I have just spoken about. We are his creation. We are his sons and we are his daughters. And he loves us. This annual thanksgiving and prayer service is an opportunity for the university community and stakeholders to express their faith and gratitude and as a community, as well as building a tradition of prayer in our institution. Prayer is very central to any person who desires to succeed. Prayerless people find themselves in very difficult positions because perhaps I should refer you to Romans 1 verse 21 that says, for although they knew God, they neither glorified him as God, nor gave him thanks, nor give thanks to him, but their thinking became futile and their foolish hearts were darkened. Giving thanks to God is so central and so critical to humanity because it's an expression of man's dependence and appreciation of this God who has created him. And I was so excited when I saw the presentations that were here from our Christian faith and more the Muslim faith. 
I think one of the things that you find difficult is men to be synchronized and to really dance. You have really danced well. Worshipping God and that harmony. I'm sure even when he was seated there, he was smiling, knowing that men are the heads and the priests and being able to stand and worship without shame. It was a great thing, I can tell you. One of these days you can invite me, I can come and experience it again. <laughs> Let us embrace this day with open hearts and minds across all religions and denominations. Mr. Chancellor Sir, distinguished guests and dear students, I acknowledge that this has been a difficult season for Kenyatta University and Kenya on matters accident from January 2024 to 10th April 2024 we we had 1313 fatalities and 3619 people seriously injured this is something that is most unfortunate and I think it is time that Kenyans took seriously how we drive on our roads. These accidents, as it is, on this day we are commemorating 11 students from this university who fell and now are with the Lord. These are not just mere numbers I've spoken about. These are our brothers and they are our sisters. My heart goes to the families, the friends, and the entire university community. We have lost and lost very big. Those students who came here, their parents, their families, their neighbors, the community, the lecturers, and the staff who have been serving them were looking to a time when we will go to the graduation square and we will be able to give them the power to, write, to read and do what appertains to that degree. The parents were waiting for them so that they can go and take up the families, the family businesses, come and help them but they have received caskets. And this is sad. As a mother, I feel very sad. And that's why you have seen I've been going around speaking to the young people concerning this illicit brew, alcohol and drug abuse. Many of our drivers, and I'm not saying that this particular was, one was not sober, but when you drink, you endanger the other motorists. You could be sober and I could be the one who is intoxicated, but we are driving on the same highway. We are driving on the same road. So as you endanger your own life, you are also endangering mine. And I think it is time we have a conversation concerning this matter because we do not want to lose any more lives. 11 is enough. And I would like us to just stand for a moment of silence to the tribute of our fallen sons and daughters. Thank you very much. Romans 8.37 says, No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. And you may be asking yourself, what are all these things? 
And I can tell you, in all these things, we are talking about the trouble, we are talking about stresses, we are talking about depression, hardship, academic pressures, family and peer pressure, persecution, famine, nakedness, danger, and so on. And even death, we have just talked about 11 who have left us. And I want to remind you, as I stand here, and those who had friends and colleagues that died, God will comfort you. Many of you, maybe it was your confidant. And today, as you are preparing for your exam, that is a person you'd have gone to look up to. And maybe they are the people that you used to call, but today when you try to call, you found they are not there. And this is how life is. I must tell you, young people, as you stay in this university, all those things we are talking about in all these things, you can be more than conquerors if you keep the right company. You can be more than conqueror if you have faith in this God. You can be more than conquerors if you have faith and anchor everything in God. Many of us do not know. Maybe when you live here, because time is in God's hand. Destinies are in God's hands. And many of us, when we are young, we never think that it will happen to us. But it happens to all. We have give, been given the chance and the opportunity to be in one of the greatest institutions. And I can tell you when I was here, just like you, and maybe those of us who have been listening to my testimony, I almost committed suicide when I was in this institution. And I was not committing suicide because the rig G who had jilted me. <laughs> and I don't think that is a reason why anybody would commit suicide. I always tell the men, if a girl leaves you, just go around. There are very many trees here, and I can see a yellow one just in front of me. Pick the flowers and give her and say good readings. Another good one is coming. It is the same with a girl. If one of my boys <laughs> drops you, do not take a rope and go and hang yourself. For what? Send him flowers and a good card and tell them you are not good for me. I will find another one. So it was not that which was making me want to commit suicide. We were given, being given the boom and the allowances. So that time, our vice chancellor and chancellor and our CS, the allowances were good. The hostel accommodation here was good. The food was good. And actually, we could spare some money. And so I took some of the money which I had received and went and bought my mom, whom I loved, a gas cooker, a wardrobe, a sofa, and moved her from Kiandu to where we used to say in the ghetto, to Thika town. And I was very happy to see my mom happy after she had given and sacrificed so much as a widow to bring us up. Just a month later, we are, somebody comes to inform me that the gas I had bought for my mom had exploded and some neighbors were hurt and one died. And people are blaming my mom for that incident. And when I went home and I saw my mom in tears, I wanted to die. Fortunately, that day, I had a good friend. She was called, I think she's late, uh, Nkirote Sara. She came and told me, you know, ah, there is somewhere people are going. I was ready to do it. And I, want, I was in my room in Ruenzori here. Yeah. 
And uh, when she called me, we were going to the State House that time. The students used to go there. And uh, <laughs> we were going to Cabaranet Gardens. Those ones of us who knew that time. We used to go there and we used to like it because we would be given good food and sometimes we would carry even the spoons from there to show that, you know, with emblem so that you can show you had been there. And so when they told me, many people thought I was going <laughs> to, the, to, to the Cabernet Garden for a different reason. But mine was a different purpose. When she told me that, it occurred to me, if I went there, I could get a chance of doing what I wanted to do quicker, and I didn't need to do it myself. And so I got into the grounds here, and the person who had come from the bus, it was from Nairobi University, the person who was the chair of Nyeri District Union was none other than the Rigi. Mungu ni wa maajabu. So I come and I see this man, he was taking people's name and his writing, and I thought he was interesting. He was wearing a brown suit. That was in June 1987. So, and I uh, checked brown tie. I didn't pay him attention, but I thought he was interesting. So, young men always dress very well. You see, I can remember the suit. And that's where I got this wonderful man of mine. But when we went to the mission, I went there and I waited, he talked, and when he was, in, uh, he was, they invited the president to come and talk, I knew my chance had come. I ran directly in line with him so that somebody could shoot me. That was my mission. But unfortunately for me, he saw me and started coming in line. And I went, hit him. And I thought, is this heaven? And then I saw I was still here. And the rest is history. I am here, and I have a husband. Because this man, when he saw that, he thought I was very courageous. So an act of cowardice generated something different, another view from someone. But so I'm saying all this to tell you, in all these things, we are more than if only we are in God, if only we know God, if only we depend on God. So don't despair when you are stressed up and especially this round when you are just about to do your exams. I encourage you not to despair. Kindly do not go to take drugs. Do not take alcohol. Encourage yourself in the Lord. Who is able to get you through all these pressures that are beyond your ability to bear? This God will bear you up. And this God will take
pastor, reverend, you will be there and destinies will be born by what you learn and how you conduct yourselves. And you must stay alive. Tell the other one, stay alive. Yeah. Because if you are not alive, if I was not alive today, would you have known all that? And who would be the mama boys now? And I'm proud to be called that name. I chose to be the boy child champion. And this is something we must all undertake to save the boy child. Boy child is just a human being like the girl child. And now mitigate their case. Let me tell you, I will advocate for their case until everyone in this country <laughs> understands, knows that they deserve equal chances. When I went to the maternity, I gave birth with the same pain for the girl and for the boy. And when I mitigate for this boy child of mine, whom everyone, when it is teenage pregnancy, they look at this boy child of mine. And they take him for defilement. Like in the Bible, the, the woman was brought without a man. But today it's a man who is being brought without the woman. Young women, I pray that you become my son's keeper. Please don't tempt them and get them to jail for many years. The law sometimes is very lenient with us, as it was lenient with men sometime. But I know in this university, we have men and women of integrity. And I want you to join me as a bystanders who go out there to champion for the boy child and the girl child as well. And to make sure we are making this world a better place to stay. I want to conclude by saying that you are the chosen generation. First Peter 2 verse 9 says, but you are chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special position, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into the wonderful light. There is answer right there that you are royal priesthood. It doesn't matter how you feel right now. You will feel like you are nothing. That's what our uncles told us when we were maids in their houses. They said we were going to amount to nothing. But there was a mother in the evening who would call us and pray with us and tell us one day you will be great people in the land. Who was right? My mother was right. And I am a mother standing here speaking to your lives and I know I am right. You are going to be great people not only in this land, you can clap if you are clapping. Not only in this land, you are the greatest scientists. You are the greatest researchers. You are the greatest leaders, greatest fathers, greatest mothers, greatest mothers. And I know this institution, even with its population, 74,000, it tells me the world will be impacted by Kenyatta University. <laughs> Many of the schools boast because Kenyatta University has produced some of the finest teachers, lecturers, and that is why you go to primary school, secondary school, everywhere. You will always find someone who will say, Kenyatta University. And I'm so proud of my university today. It has produced two of the finest ladies in the country. And I believe you are next. 
the finest man and the finest woman. You come from here. You can see they are already lining up. And what you need is to speak like he is speaking. You must speak hope into yourself. You must speak faith into yourself. You must stand up, be courageous, and know there is nothing you cannot do if you put your time in good use, if you make right decision, and if your faith is planted in the Lord. And I know that all of us have the chance to be a president. I think there are so many presidents in the world. Obama did not come to be president here, so you still have a chance when he's here. Maybe you've been Tanzania, you've been Ghana, you knew in Australia. So just don't limit yourself and say, because in 2050, he will, <laughs> he's going to, to run for presidency that you are not also to, going to gun as a president woman in 2050. You must also have that desire. And therefore, dear friends, to know I know as I stand with you and also bring the condolences of the deputy president and my family to the fraternity of my great university, to the families and those who are in hospital, we pray to God that comfort of God will be with them and speed the healing shall be upon those who are in hospital. Maybe we can stand and we can pray for the one who is in hospital in ICU. We have faith that this God that we pray is able to heal. This God is able to deliver. This God is able to speak to him even where he is, and all of us, because we love him, we will be able to stretch out our faith towards him, even though we are not where he is. Let us pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, we glorify you this afternoon. We are forever grateful for this day that you gave to us in this great university for the interfaith thanksgiving. We have come to thank you because you are our God. We have come to thank you because you are gracious to us. We have come to thank you because you are a merciful God. You have forgiven us many sins. You have guided us. You have protected us. Even when, Lord, we are on those roads, oh dear God, we did not even think of accidents because your hand was upon us. But we have, O oh Jehovah Father, a grief today that we are nursing on our 11 foreign soldiers, O oh God. And our children, our sons, their families, O oh dear God, that are hurting. And we know, Father God, we may not be able to speak now and be with them now. We are praying for those families, the parents, the sisters, the brothers, uncles, and extended families, neighbors, and especially this institution. May your spirit move in the mighty way as your hand nurses the pain that is in us, O Jehovah God, and the comrades that they had in this university. We pray that Lord God Almighty, the comfort of God the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit will be upon them. Our Lord and our God, their financial needs that we have had. And we know you are the owner of silver and gold. Let there not be any want for those families. Let there be no want in this university. Provide, oh God, the resources so that it will be easy for those who are in hospital, Jehovah Father, to find, oh God, the money they need to be able to come out. We stand here as one people, speaking one language of love and faith to you, our Father in heaven. Let the one who is in hospital receive, O oh Jehovah Father, that same love, O oh God. Speak to their mind, speak to their hearts, speak to them and let them know that we love them and above all you love him and you will heal him and you will protect him more than we can ever do. 
ours as uh, brothers, as sisters, as mothers and fathers, we can only release our faith upon him so that pain will not be too much. That, Father, there will be no hopelessness because, Lord, you are standing with him. And all the others who are not well and are recovering, we pray for quick recovery because you are the healer. And when you have done all this, we want to give you thanks. We want to give you praise. And we want to acknowledge you as the one and true God, our Father and our guide and our protector. In Jesus' name we pray.